Our poll question again is um, up there on our app. Brockman, let's update it before we get to uh, Chris Fowler. Right yeah, did here. the college football playoff committee get it right with the four teams selected? 58% say yes. Say yes. Chris Fowler, who called the uh, the ACC championship game on Saturday, join us now here on the Rich Eisen Show. What's up, Chris? Hey, Rich. I, I'm, I'm sorry to be a party to your broken heart. You're referring to the Ohio State-Michigan game. Yes. I'm, I'm sitting there, and, you know, I, it's a monster game. So do I bring appropriate excitement as any neutral announcer would do when Ohio State does something well? And in those milliseconds you have to make those calls, yes. I'm thinking, or, you know, will it crush Eisen's spirit? <laughs> if I sound too excited. So I had to – you have to make those tough calls mm-hmm. in the moment, you know, doing your job versus crushing the soul of a close friend. I, I hope I hope you recovered. Well, Chris, you, you know, I, as I as as you know, I've made mention. I've known you for you know twenty years now. You're a professional. <laughs> when the calls comes down, you're a professional. I understand. <sighs> I understand that, but uh, I, I hope You've you don't mind. Talking about that game for fifty years, and I think that I know. it's one of those events that you call, and it, even at that moment, in the heat of it, when everything's flying around, you do realize, oh wow, this is a moment that will not go away. Well, whichever sides lose this game, and will be remembered forever fondly by the winning side, and and I, I'm sure it will be. So do you think they got it right, the college football player? The call? No, 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 no. The ranking <laughs> committee. <laughs> nice. No, you got the call now right. you got to let them go. The committee is still a fresh issue. You got to let the spot go if you're a Michigan fan. Oh, no, no. The sp- uh, listen, we. I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> litigate that right here with you. It, it, it's all good. I think they did get it right. I'm with the 58% in your survey. I think it's a close call. If you're looking at best team, I'm not positive Washington would be Michigan on a neutral field or Penn State for that matter. But I, I do think that that all the talk about Penn State and the conference championship and all that stuff um, did miss the point that if you're looking at two lost teams comparing them head to head, yeah, one won the division, but they also were blasted in Ann Arbor. And Penn State, even though it was a conference opener, they're a different team now. I get all that. I watched that game twice, as a matter of fact, in, in prepping for games this year, and it was ugly. And so to pretend that didn't happen or ignore that, I think Penn State, while they're disappointed and the, the Rose Bowl is a hell of a consolation prize, feel a little bit fortunate to be fifth and ahead of Michigan in that case. But, but I think Washington is a better team than people realize. I don't think they can beat Alabama, if you're asking for my take on that game. But I, I think they're one of the four, four uh, best and four most deserving teams. Well, one of the things, too, Chris, is that I think it's hard to swallow for so many people, depending on what their allegiances it might be, is that there's no hard and fast, uh, I guess, criteria, criteria that's out there, right? I mean, I know I've seen the list of well, what it is. It's supposed to be best four, but that means different things to different people. And then there's the best four versus four most deserving teams. And that's sometimes a different question. Now, but because I also read, you, I, I I read your tweets too on Twitter. I mean, is this a good thing? I mean, would you prefer the argument or an actual system that no one can argue with? Does college football enjoy the argument? Well, I think the committee does a better job than the pollsters and the BCS formula. I do believe it's an improvement. I mean, they have incredible resources at their disposal. Um, I do believe they have integrity. I don't think they bring bias into that room. And I think they've done a pretty decent job in the first three years. As it turned out, after all their uh, comments that it was a tough, they had to ruminate down and down below, it was the same four the poll would have produced. It was basically the same form four that the BCS formula would have produced. You know, those computer rankings that fed into the BCS that got so much heat. Um, I looked at five of them on Sunday. Three of them had the same four teams, maybe a little bit different order. They flipped Ohio State and Clemson, as the polls did. But the same four teams. I, I don't think it was that that difficult to choose. I think that when you look at it, the bigger issues going forward, is it bad for the sport to have Washington get in and, in, in effect, be rewarded for a ridiculous non-conference schedule that was done back when they were just trying to scrape together enough wins to get to any bowl game and had the playoff was the last thing on their mind. The schedule is very poor. Oklahoma got punished for going 0-2 against two tough non-conference teams. If they didn't ever play Houston, if they played Rice or somebody and beat them, I think Oklahoma's in the playoff and not Washington. But they did schedule tough. They didn't play well against Ohio State. Buckeyes are in because they won that game. So if you don't think the regular season matters, the early season matchups, they do. That I think they were decisive in this, in this case. Well, and then in that case, then why would anybody – schedule anybody difficult from now on 
that's what those of us that love the sport worry about. And that's the one thing I mentioned on the show yesterday that was kind of the chilling side effect of these four being in there. I don't want athletic directors to schedule soft because they feel like this path of least resistance is okay. Just go win your conference, get three patsies in there, and the committee will reward you. I mean, I, every year is different. I mean, Baylor paid a price a couple of years ago. Um, I, I don't think this committee is immune from political considerations. I just I don't think human beings are, are immune from that. And I think that the fact that the Pac-12 champion was not included last year, you know, two lost Stanford team was very good, ended up embarrassing Iowa in the Rose Bowl. I think two years in a row to have your champion excluded is difficult for that group politically. And and if Washington was sitting there with one loss had been excluded, it would have been a, a firestorm out west. Chris Fowler. And they, they avoided that. So. Chris, Chris Fowler joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Your alma mater, do they have a beef about not making the Rose Bowl? Do you think? Well, they're disappointed, but imagine being Colorado and you're told at the beginning of the year, you know, you're going to have 10 wins, you're going to lose division title, and you're going to be a close call for the Rose Bowl. You just signed up for the Alamo Bowl. But yeah, they're disappointed. I mean, to be one spot below USC without their quarterback, uh, they, they lost a four point game at the Coliseum. That's why USC's ahead. But, you know, hey, the Buffs in the Alamo Bowl is still a, is still a fantasy compared to where they've been. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, USC, Penn State, I'm going to get to call the Rose Bowl. On Jan 2, that'll be a lot of fun, and oh. uh, that's a great matchup. So, okay, let's talk about this. So do you know which game on New Year's Eve you're calling right now? Do you know that yet? I do. Which I one? Do you know. Which one you <laughs> You do know? Or I don't you... know if I'm supposed to say. Okay. I don't know if I'm supposed to say. Okay. Like, I'm, not, I'm probably not supposed to say, but okay. um, I do know. Is it, a, is, it a, is it a peachy matchup? Would you call the matchup peachy? <laughs> uh, I don't want to go to... The, to uh, to Pasadena directly after the game. Okay, got and, it. Um, Geographically sound location because yeah. the other one's in a desert. So, I understand. Okay, well, just don't, we'll leave it at that. I want to get you in trouble. I don't want two one four nine to call you up or anything like no, that. I don't want. No, no, I okay. can't. They like to announce these things on their own timetable. Okay, but, um, but so you we, will be we, calling we, the Rose Bowl. You we're, will be. We're not. Uh, we're not. We're not uh, lacking in input. Let's put it that way. So I think that. Um, Okay. If you, if you view the two semifinals and make your own judgment. Anyway, yes. both will be great on New Year's Eve, won't they? Uh, okay. <laughs> 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 I tell you, I got to tell you, both will be great. No, 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 no doubt about that. Yeah, I mean, because the Fiesta would be uh, Clemson and Ohio State, and obviously yeah. you, you, those would be the two teams, and I don't want to go too deep into it. I don't want to get in any trouble. Those are the last two winning teams that you've uh, called behind the microphone right there with Ohio yeah, State I mean, and Clemson. What's, what's good, you know, you've got, you got, look, I mean, I, it's not dissimilar to last year where Michigan State was a big underdog to Alabama. Washington will arrive with a chip in their shoulder. they got to go to Bama's second home, which doesn't make it any easier. As if tackling Alabama isn't enough, you got to go to Atlanta where they just hammered the Gators and they're very familiar with it and they have a whole bunch of crowd in there. So it makes the Huskies uh, chore that much tougher but again if you tell washington fans at the beginning of the season you'd be in the playoff they'd be thrilled and you know, every, everywhere you go bring on bama we want bama uh-huh. I thought the signs are always waving at the back I say, okay well there you go I, see how you like it because michigan state didn't like it very much <laughs> last year so you know, i think i think washington has a better chance than the spartans did in that game but you know bama's a two touchdown favorite for a reason and are you uh, part of the heisman broadcast again this year i am this is awards week so we okay. have the finalists are announced you have um Mr. Woodson and Mr. Howard are, will be at MetLife tonight uh, for the countdown show Okay. Uh, before the Jets game, and they, they will be announced about 7 Eastern. So the question is, do you have three guys, four guys, five, or six? Mm-hmm. Six is about the max, but it sort of depends completely on how the votes are bunched. We, ESPN's got really nothing to do with the, determining the number of invites. Uh, it's just how where the votes break, and, mm-hmm. and we'll see. And were you part of the uh, production meeting for the announcement show where somebody sat there and said, okay, we're going to announce the first three, and then we'll sit on four. We'll show a couple live shots of some players and some teams. <laughs> we'll, get Kirk, we'll get Kirk's thoughts. We'll have Reese just sit there and marinate for another 30 seconds. That was, that was quite a production decision right there. I was wondering if they Chris. might wait till about 3.30 Eastern to announce the fourth team. They keep, just keep the no. Washington waiting. And Chris Peterson made mention that was pretty funny. Yeah. No, I was, uh, I was in uh, 
in a studio in Miami Beach above the, by the Clevelander Hotel with the palm wow. trees swing and you only know one speed behind me. I was not <laughs> no part of that speaking in Bristol. <laughs> Art Basel or Art Art Briles? Which what, there's different uh, there's two, two yeah, different arts. They don't know who Art Briles is. They, they know all about Art Basel. <laughs> Chris, thanks for treating me gently with the Michigan loss to Ohio State in double overtime. It was uh, it was a rough one to take, but you did a great job as always. Go have a go have a great bowl game, man. And, and uh, I think the Wolverines will be uh, ho hopefully right back in the mix for many years. Oh yeah, exactly. Absolutely, Chris. Thanks. Appreciate appreciate. All right, it's my pleasure. Chat soon. And it's uh, Chris Fallon. The Rich Eisen Show weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.